Good morning, everyone. I'm TJ, and today I want to give you an introduction to nonlinear contact behavior. And I will use the Solver NX SOL601, which is uh, the Adena solver, basically. And I will use an example from the NAFIMS book, Introduction to Nonlinear Finite Element Analysis. And this example is basically um, an actual beam which is extended until it hits rigid ground. That means contact occur. And then you will see how the tangential stiffness changes. Uh, I've already uh, launched one video uh, focusing on nonlinear material behavior. This one is focusing on nonlinear contact. And the last one will focus on nonlinear geometry. That means large deflections and follower loads. This is my model. It consists of uh, two beams with a length of 50 millimeters, which are joined together rigidly here in the middle. And uh, then there is a gap distance between the lower end B and the rigid ground. And this gap distance is 0 0.025 millimeter. And then when this beam is extended, <coughs> contact will occur and the stiffness will change. Uh, in this beam, I assume linear material behavior uh, I don't want any plasticity to occur, so I stay below the, the yield stress and apply a deformation of 0 0.05 millimeter in the middle here. And then contact happens after 0 0.025 millimeter, that means half the distance, which gives me actually the double stiffness because uh, the stiffness is the same both in tension and compression here. So that's why I double the stiffness when contact occur. This is how I made my NX model. The NAFIMS book uses uh, beam elements, but I use solid elements. First, we have one part, which is um, the beam, uh, which will be in contact. And it has a length of 100 millimeters, and the cross section is 10 times 10 millimeter. Then I have a lower part here, and that part has an offset from the beam of 0 0.025 millimeters, which is actually the gap distance I want to use. Um, in the middle of this part, I created an RB2 element, uh, as you see here. And in the master node, I will apply later an enforced displacement that uh, enforces the contact at this end here between the beam and this part, the bottom plate. Um, I used uh, hex 20 elements with size 5 millimeters. I also used a material model which is um, identical to the one I used for the beam 1 in the nonlinear material video. You can use any steel material here because you will be below the yield stress. Um, my yield stress was set to 200 megapascal and the E modulus to 200 gigapascal and the Poisson ratio of 0.3 which is a common steel property. This is really bad steel, I guess, but it doesn't matter. And as I said, I used a rigid element in the middle here. My boundary conditions look like this. Uh, first, on the upper end, I fixed all the nodes. And then I did the same at the lower end of this um, bottom plate. Um, and then I used an enforced displacement applied to the master node of this RB2 element. And this enforced displacement is applied in 100 steps using the time step interval, which I entered like this. 100 steps during 10 seconds. Just like I did for the nonlinear materials video. And then I used a simulation object between the bottom surface of the bar and the top surface of this bottom plate. So here are contacts. And the distance, the gap distance, uh, is 0 0.025 millimeters. And what I will do is to apply a deformation here, which is 0 0.05 millimeters. That means twice the, the gap distance. And that's uh, why the contact will occur, and I will see the nonlinear effect. This is my material model, 
And with my applied um, deformation and gap distance set to 0.025 millimeter, I will stay below the yield stress of 200 megapascal. So uh, basically I don't have to enter this one. Uh, the most important parameter here is the E modulus, 200 gigapascal. I will soon show you how to set up and run a nonlinear contact analysis in NX as well 601, but first let's have a look at the results. I did apply the enforced displacement of 0.5 millimeters in 100 increments, but I only requested 50 animation frames. So here, after 25 frames, uh, the deformation here is as applied 0.025 millimeter, and you see it uh, changes at this end of the beam and this one is fixed so it has zero deformation. Then the lower part of this beam is acting like a rigid body. Uh, this part will also have a deformation of 0.25 millimeters. And then the gap is closed so now I will have contact between the upper and lower end here. Then you see what happens after 50 uh, frames or at the end of the simulation. That means when all 100 increments are loaded. Then I will have a deformation in the middle here which is as prescribed 0.05 millimeters which is twice the gap distance here. Then you see this is in contact because it has only 0.025 millimeter. Uh, the material here is so stiff that it will not penetrate and that means the deformation in this end is 0 0.025 millimeter. So this is how the deformation looks like at the end of the simulation and contact has occurred. In order to visualize the change in uh, tangential stiffness due to the nonlinear contact behavior, I used the two function option in NX. Here you see I plotted the force versus the displacement. What I did was first to export the AFU for the displacements and then created another AFU for the force plot. And then I used a two function combination to create this curve that shows displacements and forces. That means this actually represents my tangential stiffness. And here is what happened. Initially, I stretched the upper part of the beam. That means the end of the beam, which is above the applied deformation. And it has the length of L and the cross-section of A and the E modulus of E. So here I have the stiffness of this upper part of the beam represented. Then, when the gap is closed and contact occur, I will start to <clears throat> add compression to the lower part of the beam. And since uh, the stiffness in both compression and, um, and tension is the same, then the stiffness will be doubled as soon as I, I get contact between the bottom part, the bracket or the bottom plate and the, and the lower part of the beam. So here you see a stress, uh, not a stress stiffening, but a stiffening effect due to contact nonlinearity. And here you see the tangential stiffness that I get from this simulation. If you want to run this nonlinear contact analysis yourself, this is how to do it. First, you create one beam uh, which, with the length of 100 millimeters, and then you make another part uh, which has an offset of 0 0.025 millimeters. And the dimension is 10 times 10 in the cross section here and 20, 20 times 20 in the lower end. Uh, then you create a mesh on this one. You make the fem part, the working part, and it looks like this. You see how it's meshed. Uh, the hex elements have the dimension of uh, 5 millimeters, and I made it uh, very coincident here so that the contact will be nice. The nodes will be aligned quite well here, as you see. Uh, then I used uh, two different material properties. First, the solid part here, it's made of classic steel material. And I think I used the same material properties as for beam one in the nonlinear material video. But that doesn't matter because I will not have no plasticity here. There will be no yielding. So the only thing which is important here is to use the material of 200 gigapascal, E modulus and a Poisson ratio 0 0.3. 
Then the bottom part is made of a very solid steel material. Yeah, I think I multiplied the uh, E-modulus with 100 or so, just to make sure that um, this is acting like a rigid contact uh, part. And then in the middle, I applied um, RB2 element, and in the master node here, I will apply the enforced displacement. Let's go back to the solid view, like this. Then we can open the simulation file. And here you see I created our SOL601 solution. And let's first have a look at that one. Um, there is nothing more special here. I have a case control card here. And in, in this one, I added um, <clears throat> some uh, output requests. I, am, I requested uh, additional forces and contacts. Let's see where our contact contact results. We don't really need it, but I think you can run with the uh, with, uh, default uh, settings here. Then parameters. In this example, uh, displacements are small because the gap is only 0 0.025 millimeters, so I don't need to switch this one on. And it's the same with the strains. Uh, in the NAFIMS book, they assume uh, linear relationships between displacements and strains and strains and stresses. So I can leave them um, deactivated like this. Then let's have a look at the constraints. I have one fixed end at the upper part and one fixed end at the lower part here. Then I have an enforced displacement. Then we have to go to, oops, to the line view again. Here's the enforced displacement. And you see I've enforced a displacement in the positive set direction. That's okay because then I will have a stiffness which is, um, or a curve that is going to the positive direction as well. I will have a positive reaction force. Let's see here. Uh, I applied at zero time, uh, zero displacement. At time 10 seconds, I applied 0 0.05 millimeters, which is twice the gap distance. We'll, that will ensure the, the uh, contact and the nonlinear effect from contacts. And in addition, I have to then uh, increment the, dis the displacement, go to case control, and here in the step time step intervals, I have to apply uh, the displacement incrementally and I used 100 steps and a time increment of 0 0.1 which gave a total pseudo simulation time of 10 seconds. We pretty much run a static analysis here so it's a pseudo time. So that's how you applied the, the enforced displacement and you incremented it in order to get contact. Then I have a simulation object here uh, which defines the contact between these two phases, the source phase and the target phase, two different regions, and I have no friction or anything here. Uh, when you have applied this, you're ready to run the simulation, and it takes only a few minutes here. So let's have a look at the results. When the nonlinear contact analysis has completed, we can open the results tab. And here we have 100 increments of results. So let's first have a look at the set displacement. And let's set up the animation. We choose iterations. And then we don't have to look at the results for each increment. So we do it like this. We use step length 2. And then we can start the animation. First it loads it. Let's stop it out after 25, 25 increments like this. Then we see that, um, or not 25 increments, but 25 result frames. That represents five, 50 increments. Now we see that the deformations in this lower end um, are 20, 0 0.025 millimeters. 
because uh, the part of the beam which is under the, the RB2 element here has the same displacements because still no contact has occurred while the other two ends have zero deformations. Then we can go on and then we see the displacements increase. We can stop at the last frame there. Now we see that uh, the formation of the midsection is 0 0.05 millimeter, which is uh, this enforced displacement. But then you see at this end, uh, the displacement stopped at 0 0.025 because then contact occurred. The bar hits this rigid part, bottom part. And the other end is uh, still having a zero dis deflection. So no contact has occurred. And in no, uh, both the stiffness from the upper and the lower part is, uh, is considered. So let's have a look. Let's try to visualize the nonlinear stiffness behavior. First, we could um, use this uh, curve. We can stop the animation and we can create a graph. Then we probably <clears throat> have to go to the line view. And we can plot the curve like this. Uh, the displacement is uh, applied as a step function, so it's linear versus the time, the pseudo time. Then we can do the same with the reaction force. We can choose the reaction force and we can plot the curve uh, like this. Okay, and here we see the effect which we are looking for. But you see, um, the abscissa axis is time and it should be displacement because displacement versus force can show us the nonlinear stiffness. In this case, uh, the, the, the curve will look the same, but let's show you how you can co use the combined function to show the graph uh, that is displaying the change in tangential stiffness. First, you well, you we had this um, curve here. What you have to do is to go to this option, save graph, and give the force curve a name, an AFU file, and the same with the displacement. You give it also a AFU file name. Uh, then you can go to the x, y function manager and then the two curves that you have saved will be displayed here. And you can mark them like this. You right click and you use um, to function and you use this one. And then we plot it. And here you see what we are looking for. Here we have displacement and force force versus displacement. And here you see before contact occur, the stiffness uh, contribution comes from the upper part of the beam. And then when contact occur, the stiffness uh, increases, it doubles because the stiffness is uh, the same in tension and compression. So here you see the nonlinear uh, stiffness effect on the tangential stiffness that we were looking for. And this is showing that the nonlinear contact analysis is giving the results that we want.